The Sunday school teacher accused of killing a California girl and stuffing her body in a suitcase makes her first court appearance today. Melissa Huckabee is in a special cell under suicide watch while a grieving town searches for answers. CBS News correspondent John Blackstone reports. In a development that can only be called shocking, the DA tells the Associated Press that Huckabee may be charged with rape, molestation, and murder in the course of a kidnapping. A murder which sources tell CBS News took place at this church where Huckabee's grandfather is the pastor. Huckabee will be arraigned later today, and if the charges are true, so many in the town of Tracy hope someday for an answer to that all-important question, why? John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco. Criminologist James Fox is the author of The Will to Kill, Making Sense of Senseless Murder. He's also a professor at Northeastern University, and he joins us from Boston. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How rare is it for women to commit such heinous acts? And by heinous acts, I'm talking about raping, molesting, and murdering a young girl who is not a relative. It's extraordinary, extraordinarily so. I mean, when you talk about murder, first of all, only 10% of murderers are female, but they generally kill in the family, not outside the family. When you add rape as a possible charge, we're talking about only about 100 cases over the past three decades. Add to it the fact that the, female, the victim was a female and a child. I can only find one other case 25 years ago in South Carolina. Talk about very few and very far between. This is extraordinarily rare. And what about the fact that the accused here, in this case, is a mother herself to a five-year-old little girl? How does that play into everything? Well, it, it, it offends our sense of what motherhood should be like and the way that mothers should behave. They should protect their own child as well as be protective of all the children in the neighborhood, not be their molester or murderer, allegedly, of course. So, so much about this case uh, strikes a nerve so much about this case uh, will continue to, to get big headlines. After all, any time we have cases involving cute little girls in the news, uh, our hearts pour out to them because it's, we can identify. Most Americans can see this child. Uh, they see in her their, their own child, their own grandchild, their niece, their sister. So this is a... Is a painful case for, for many people, obviously. Uh, let me ask you this, if you could. It, can you even begin to explain what could possibly be the motive behind something like this? Well, you know, when men kill, it's often aggressive and predatory, an offensive move. When women kill, it's usually a response, uh, sometimes self-defense, sometimes defending others, or a response to some emotional state of mind. But self-defense against an eight-year-old child? Uh, I'm saying, given the options here, it's, the idea is that when women kill, it's in response to something, protective, responsive, even a response to, to a, some degree of conflict or, or anger. If there may be here, for example, something involving her own uh, five-year-old child who, again, was a playmate of the victim. We don't know all the details yet, but my guess is that this is not an act that was planned by, by the perpetrator, but something happened in their interactions with, with the child that that precipitated this act. After so all, she, she did have a criminal record, but they were they were property related crimes, not violence, not aggression, certainly not rape. Still a lot of unanswered questions this morning. Criminalist James Fox, thank you. Mm -hmm.